On this video, I will cover inductance and capacitive reactance. I will also go over true power, reactive power, and apparent power for the series and parallels. I assume that you are already familiar with inductance and capacitance because either you read it somewhere else or you watched the previous two videos. We're going to start covering this series circuit where I got a capacitor, a resistor, and an inductor. I also give you putting here the formulas to calculate both capacitive reactants and inductive reactants. Capacitive and reactants both are measured in ohms. And I got my resistance. The frequency that is applied to the circuit will be the same frequency for both the inductor and the capacitor. So if we're given the inductance and the capacitance, we can easily calculate. But even though this is resistance and this is resistance, we cannot directly add them like we used to do when we had resistor 1, resistor 2, and resistor 3, where we just added all those three resistance. And this one's things change. Keep in mind that when electrons start flowing, it looks like they just flow through the capacitor. And because the capacitor is charging, when they go through the inductor, they go through, but now they go, the inductor opposes voltage. And these two, they just keep fighting each other when the frequency just, or, or rather the electrons start going back and forth to where they store energy, because both of them store energy. And as polarities switch from the source, they give the energy back to the system. So the reactants, they are, instead of adding them, what we do is we subtract them. If, if we have a high, so I withdrew it over here. If our, re, if our inductive reactance is larger than our capacitors, we just take away, we just use this formula. But if the opposite is true, if the capacitive reactance is larger than the inductance, then they subtract it this way, and that's how we get the resistance value of the reactive system. So the reactive system is pretty much the capacitor and the inductor. Notice how I had left out the uh, resistor. On page 410 of the NIST modules, we are given, well, there is this problem over here, and they actually give us these uh, values for our frequency, our inductors, and capacitors. And after the problem is worked out, according to that, they just simply are trying to indicate that our inductance in this problem is bigger than our capacitance. So therefore, to get X of the total reactance, of this, they just simply subtract uh, one from the other, giving us an inductive circuit. So what they're saying is that the resistance of the inductor in this particular problem is larger than the, the, uh, the inducting capacitance of the, this problem is larger than the capacitive reactance on this circuit. On the following page, 411, they do the same problem, but now what they do is they just change some of the values to include the frequency. And then now what it does is, now the capacitance is what is larger than the inductance, so they switch the value. So now the reactance is a capacitive reactance for the whole system. Well, for the uh, reactive system, it is a capacitive reactance. The capacitor, you can say, it wins. So here, our capacitance reactance is 50 ohms. Our inductive reactance is 20 ohms. So we're just simply going to take 50 because it's larger. That's going to be a capacitive reactance minus our inductive reactance. And the reactive side of the house is just going to be a total of 30 ohms. Now, we could just for a moment ignore these two and 
we just think of this as a since the one that won was the the capacitor so we just could think about it, of it as a capacitive system and we're just going to say that that capacitive system has uh, in this case 30 ohms now 30 ohms or 30 capacitive reacted ohms are in series now with our 20 ohm resistor to add those two to add those two we cannot just simply take the resistance value of 20 ohms and add it to the inductive values of 30 ohms if we were to do that that would be wrong what we have to do is to use this trigonometrical, trigonometrical function or formula rather okay where we just simply take the resistance square it and then we add it the actual in this case was the capacitance reactance and square that once we work all those values and we add them and then we take the square root and when we get that we're gonna get a value which is in ohms too but that value we're gonna call it Z and which is impedance impedance is the addition of all the resistance both regular resistance and reactant resistance in a circuit that is the total opposition that the source sees from the load now let's go back and talk about the formula that I just gave you the Z equals to a, the resistance squared plus whatever the reactance is the reactant is going to be whether capacitive or resi or capacitive or inductive based on which whoever whose whoever is larger and those two are going to be subtracted on a series circuit remember that in the last videos i said that in inductors voltage leads current and in capacitors it was the opposite current um lag voltage what I, didn't have, what I didn't tell you there is that the lag is by 90 degrees. So, the same way the reactance, or in this case the, capa the inductive reactance, is 90 degrees offset with relationship to the resistance. The capacitance is also, now it's in a different angle, you know that, because uh, in here it's lagging and in here it's leading, but no matter what, we know from uh, trigonometry that the, if we got an angle over here of 90 degrees, then the distance between this point and this point, which it would be what our, our Z value here. So because the values are offset by 90 degrees, we can use this Pythagorean formula to be able to calculate those values same thing in here no matter what we get so in a system we can have both inductors and capacitors but at the end one of them is going to be larger and if the inductor is larger than the capacitor we're just going to subtract whatever capacitance so if this value in here is 50 and this value in here is 80 we're just going to subtract the 50 and this is a ugly 50 this is going to subtract this 50 from this 80 and this is going to be gone because we just subtracted and then this over here is going to change because well 50 minus or 80 minus 50 it will be 30 so it will be 30 our our, um, our triangle is smaller and at that point on we just say that it's an inductive or cap uh, capacitance and we just simply go in and take that value and that's the one that we're going to stick over here before I talk about power first the Ohm's law remember that voltage is equal to current times resistance and we have a formula for power where power is equal to voltage times oh, 
current times voltage. Now, if we do not have the voltage, we just simply take this value and we can put it over here, which will give us this new equation. Now, notice that we had two currents, so when multiplying them, we're going to get a new equation, which is going to be power equals to current squared times resistance. We're going to use that to calculate the different powers for inductive, capacitive, and resistive circuits. Whenever we have uh, systems where we got resistors, capacitors, and inductors, we are going to have three types of powers. We got true power, which is the power that is used by the system. And then that one is measured in watts and is calculated by I squared times the resistance of the system. The capacitors and the inductors, they get combined, whichever is larger will determine if the system is going to be inductive or capacitive. Now, react, the power that they're going to be using is going to be called reactive power, and it is measured in volt amps reactive, and it is easily calculated by multiplying the current, the current that goes through it, and if this one is a serious system, so therefore current will be common. So we just multiply the current squared times the resistance of that reactive side of the house. Now, as far as the generator is, he's providing power. And if it was an inductive system, it's not going to provide just this amount of power or that amount of power, but it's going to provide this power over here. So it is what is called the um, apparent power, and it is measured in both amps, and it is calculated by uh, the current uh, squared times the impedance. Impedance is the addition of, like I told you before, the addition of the reactive resistance to the resistive resistance. That's why we're able to just simply, once we have the impedance, we can multiply that times the current of the whole circuit, and we will get our apparent power. Another way to solve for the apparent power, it is simply to, well, since you see that apparent power is right here, well, we can do a part in power is equal to this one over here happens to be watts a square and then we're gonna add to that the volt amps uh, reactive it doesn't matter if whether it's inductive or whether it's capacitive it is so we'll take our bars and we'll square it We will take that value and we'll square root it. And when we do that, we can get our apparent power. So actually, I just show you or we'll talk about two ways of getting apparent power. Now, since we talk about all of those powers, then we gotta talk about a concept that is called power factor. Power factor, as I put over here, is true power, which is resist power of resistance, that is power that is actually used, but the apparent power, which is, is the total power seen by the source. Notice that I did not put in here reactive power, because um, apparent power is the combination of true power and reactive power. So, another way to calculate power factor is to just simply divide the resistance of the circuit by the inductance of the circuit. 
On page 423 of the NIST modules, you find some calculations for power factor, how is it done, and further explanations, definitely farther more in depth than what I get, that I go to. But what is important about power factor for you to understand is that it has to do with efficiency of a system. What I mean by efficiency is that in any system, like this one over here, so I got some resistance, which is power that actually I'm using, but since we got some, let's say, motors in there that are creating a lot of inductance, they, they seem to drive the load from the point of view of the uh, company that sells us power, or whether it be fuel that we're making power. So we're spending more fuel because instead of using, instead of creating power, for this, now, if you, if you will, I'm kind of like transporting the line, we do have to make up more power because of the longer line that we have on the apparent power. The way to fix that, it is simply to add capacitors, in this case, to the system of a value that it will be equal to 80 ohms capacitive so as we saw earlier what's going to happen is that these two are going to cancel each other well because they are of the same value and what that's going to happen is it's going to draw this blue line and now the power that the system is going to be consumed is going to be exactly what the true power it is if we were to get to one that to that situation we could say that our power factor is unity one which is the highest value of a power factor that the system can ever have to correct the excessive inductance in many systems what they do is outside buildings you will see these big banks of squared uh, structures outside of the buildings and that's because they got capacitors inside there and on board ships, we could use something that's called a synchronous motor. And those motors, they actually have capacitive effects that could be used to correct the power factor. Now moving into a parallel circuit. So again, resistor, inductor, capacitor. In, in series, current is common but in parallel the current through each branch is going to be depending on the resistance or reactance of that particular branch so that's because voltage is common everywhere so the voltage that we have here is the same voltage that we got there which is the same voltage that we got there because of that we're going to use a different set of formulas this over here, or first here, these are the formulas that we have to use to calculate series RLC circuits. Now, in parallel, which is what we want to do now, we got to use this. Notice that before we were either subtracting the reactive inductance from the capacitance when, it, when the reactive inductance was larger or if it's the opposite if the capacitor reactance was larger we subtracted the inductance from it and that's how we got our reactance here we are going to be working is with currents the currents of each of the branches we're also going to be using this formula to calculate the total uh current of the induct uh Z. Remember what Z meant? Z was the impedance of the system. So, yeah. so to calculate the total current impedance, that's what we're gonna be. Or we will have to do. There is a very well solved problem for this. Actually, on page 430, which they did such a good job that I just don't feel that, or don't have the need to go explain over too much. Without going into too much detail of how they solved the, the problem, pretty much they took our basic formula and well they cleared for I and they got now voltage divided by resistance and then they took the resistance 
of each of the sites, whether it be inductive reactants, uh, capacitive reactants, should I say, inductive reactants or regular resistance, and we just simply uh, replace the values like I did over here, and they got six amps for our inductor and two amps for our capacitor, and since the inductor has a larger current than the capacitor, they just simply subtract it that way, so they follow the same, the same rule as we had before. So if the capacitor would have a bigger value, if this would have been an eight, we would have flipped it around, we would be subtracting eight from six. But since these are our values, that's what we're doing six minus two. And that's gonna give us a total, uh, see, notice XI, a total reactive current of four amps. Now, then we took that, our Pythagorean equation, and we have our four amps over there squared, and then here, especially, we have the value that we got from the resistance, the current that is going through the resistor. And that's how we got the current of the impedance. So whatever the uh, source is seeing, and it's gotta, it's gotta provide that much current, that's what this one is doing. So once we had this one, And then it's the same formula that we have over here, it's just that it's arranged for impedance. Instead of uh, using R, they're using Z, because Z is that it's understood that is the impedance resistance plus reactive resistance. And the voltage is common, 100 volts throughout all the systems, all the uh, branches, and our current for all of them combined, both this is uh, current impedance, which we calculated, always calculated here, and that is the current that all of them are consume, uh, are using. So the the resistor is actually using some current. The inductor is using a lot of current, but the capacitor is kind of um, acting as a battery or temporary uh, storage that is. Uh, uh, compensating for whatever the inductor uh, was using. If we wanted to have a perfect uh, system in here, we just simply, uh, I guess in this case, we'll lower our capacitance, and now we could have what is called a, um, a balanced system, uh, a power factor of one, because our current in that situation would be six amps and six amps and they will cancel each other. I want to make a quick correction. A moment ago I said that to lower, uh, to make this system a power factor of one, that I will lower my capacitance. That's false. Actually, I will have to increase my capacitance to lower my reactance from 150 to 50 because, uh, so that's what I should have said. I should have said that I, that I needed to lower my reactance over here, and to accomplish that, according to this formula, if I want to lower the reactance from 150 down to 50 to match I, my our uh, inductance, I will have to add more capacitors in parallel, so that, or just put bigger capacitors in there, so that I will be able to accomplish and lower my total capacitive reactants.